Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, you'll learn how to set up Google Analytics on Shopify, including e-commerce tracking using Google Tag Manager. To do this, we're going to use a custom pixel in Shopify. The great thing about using a custom pixel is that it works independently of your store's theme and other files. So it's a much more reliable way to implement tracking. Before we jump in, I need to highlight there are other ways you can install Google Analytics on your Shopify store. The easiest option is to use the Google and YouTube app, but this doesn't provide the same flexibility as using Google Tag Manager. The other option is to add code to your template and checkout page, but this method is no longer recommended. So we're going to use a custom pixel instead. Let's head to Shopify to do this. To add a custom pixel, let's navigate to settings. And let's look for customer events on the left and select this option. This is where we can add custom pixels to Shopify. This lets us track a whole range of actions taking place without needing to modify our template. And it's a more secure way to add tracking code to our store. If you have any existing pixels, you'll see them listed here. Currently, I don't have any pixels, so let's click Add Custom Pixel. Now we need to name the pixel. Since we're going to be using Google Tag Manager, let's name it Google Tag Manager. Now let's click Add Pixel. There are two sections to configure our new custom pixel. At the top, we can choose the privacy settings for the pixel. These settings let you control when the custom pixel will fire, and these settings integrate with Shopify's built-in cookie banner. If you're using Shopify's built-in cookie banner, you'll need to ensure that you choose the appropriate settings. Since I'm not using the built-in cookie banner, I'm going to select Permission, and choose Not Required. This will mean Google Tag Manager will fire for all of the actions taking place on my site, even if consent hasn't been granted. This is also the setting you will probably want to choose if you're using a third-party consent banner on your Shopify store. OK, now let's select Data Sale. This lets you control when the pixel will fire if you're using Shopify's built-in Data Sales opt-out page. Since I'm not using this for my store, I'm going to select Data Collected does not qualify as Data Sale. Below this, we can add the code for our custom pixel. I've already created the code to track when people add items to their cart, right through to making the final purchase. Let's take a look at the code. Here we can see the code I've created for e-commerce tracking. At the top, we establish the data layer and add the Google Tag Manager container code. Then traveling down, we can see standard customer events that Shopify makes available to us when using custom pixels. These standard customer events let us capture different details as people engage with our Shopify store. At the top, we can see Shopify's checkout completed customer event. This event lets us capture details once someone has completed a purchase on our site. We can see when the checkout complete event occurs, we're getting details for all of the items people have purchased. And then we're pushing a purchase event to the data layer for Google Tag Manager. The purchase event includes all of the information that is required to configure tracking for Google Analytics. This includes the currency, transaction value, other details, and the items people have purchased. Travelling down, we can see the Shopify customer event for payment info submitted. This is used to push the add payment info event to the data layer. We can also see other customer events are used to push the add shopping info to the data layer, along with begin checkout, View Cart, Add to Cart, and View Item. You can also customise this code further if you want to capture additional details or want to adjust the information that is captured. 
to save you time, I recommend getting a copy of this code. You can also refer to Shopify's support articles. However, they haven't provided the best solution. So again, I suggest getting my version. I've included a link in the description below this video. Okay, I'm going to copy this code. Now let's head back to Shopify. And let's paste the code we copied. Now we need to adjust the code so that it uses the container ID from our Google Tag Manager container. So let's head to Google Tag Manager. We can see the container ID at the top, so let's copy this. And let's head back to Shopify. We need to paste our container ID into the code. Now let's click Save on the top right corner. Next, to add the custom pixel to our website, we need to click Connect at the bottom. And click Connect again. Now our custom pixel has been added to our Shopify store. So the next step is to configure things in Google Tag Manager. So let's head back to Google Tag Manager. This is a brand new Google Tag Manager container. So I'm going to import my pre-configured container for e-commerce tracking. To do this, let's select Admin. Then select Import Container. I'm going to choose the pre-configured container. If you got my code for the custom pixel, this also includes this pre-configured container. Or you can get this separately if you like. Again, I've included a link in the description below this video. Now let's select Existing for the workspace. Select the default workspace. And I'm going to select Merge. And I'm going to import the container. Now let's navigate to Variables. We need to edit the variable named change GA4 measurement ID. So let's select this. Let's edit the name. And now let's head to Google Analytics to get our measurement ID. I'm already in the admin area, so let's select data streams. Now let's open the data stream and we can copy the measurement ID on the top right corner. Now let's head back to Google Tag Manager and let's replace the ID with the measurement ID we just copied from Google Analytics. And let's click Save. Now we're going to create a variable to capture cleaner URLs from Shopify. This is because the URLs automatically captured from our custom pixel implementation can be different from the actual URLs on your Shopify store. This is due to the way custom pixels work. Cleaning up the URLs is optional, but you will probably want to do it. So let's create a new variable. Let's name the variable Shopify Page Location. Let's select a variable configuration and choose data layer variable as the variable type. Now let's enter URL all lowercase as the data layer variable name. And let's save the variable. Next, we navigate to Triggers. And let's create a new trigger. Let's name the trigger Shopify Page View. And let's select Trigger Configuration. And choose Custom Event as the trigger type. Now let's enter Shopify underscore page underscore view all lowercase as the event name. We're going to use this trigger to track page views on our Shopify store. 
The reason we're doing this is so we're also capturing cleaner URLs for the pages people view. Now let's save the trigger. Next, we navigate to Tags. We can see the e-commerce tag that was imported. Let's select this. And let's select Event Parameters. I'm going to add an individual parameter, but you could configure an Event Settings variable instead. Now let's select Add Parameter and enter page underscore location or lowercase. Then for the value, let's select our Shopify page location variable. This will mean cleaner URLs are reported in Google Analytics. Now let's save the tag. Since we only have an e-commerce tag configured, we also need to create a Google tag for Google Analytics. So let's create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Tag GA4 Page View. And let's select Tag Configuration. Now let's choose Google Tag as the tag type. And let's select the GA4 Measurement ID. Now let's select Event Parameters. Then select Add Parameter. Enter Page Underscore Location. And for the value, let's select our Shopify Page Location variable. Now let's scroll down and select Triggering. Let's choose the Shopify Page View trigger we created. And let's save the tag. Now let's click Submit to publish our container. Let's name the version. And let's click Publish. We've now added Google Tag Manager to our Shopify store using a custom pixel and we've configured our tags in Google Tag Manager. So the next step is to test that everything is working correctly. One limitation of custom pixels is that we can't easily use Tag Assistant or the Google Analytics debug view to see what's being tracked. So Shopify recommends using the legacy Tag Assistant extension for Chrome. Let's take a look at this. Let's head to my demo store. And I've already installed the legacy Tag Assistant extension. If you want to install it and haven't yet, I've included a link in the description below this video. Now let's navigate to view a product. Let's select the extension. Then we just need to select our Google Tag Manager container ID. And then choose the data layer tab. This shows us the events that have been pushed to the data layer, along with all of the information that is being captured. Here we can see the view item event, along with the e-commerce information that will be captured by Google Tag Manager and sent to Google Analytics. So you can use this extension to check that everything is working correctly for each of the steps in your Shopify store. Apart from this option, another great way to check that everything is working correctly is to use the real-time report in Google Analytics. Let's head to Google Analytics to take a look. Let's navigate to Reports. And then Real-time. In the Event Count by Event Name card, we can see all of the events as they come through. Let's select the view item event. We can see the currency parameter for e-commerce tracking has come through. And we can see the value parameter. Items don't appear in the real-time report, but we can also see page location. We've now implemented e-commerce tracking on our Shopify store using a custom pixel. 
Once data is coming through to Google Analytics and you've waited a day, you will also be able to see information in the monetization reports and create your own exploration reports too. If you previously installed Google Analytics on Shopify using another method, you must remove this to avoid capturing duplicate events. For example, if you've added code to your template and checkout page, then make sure you remove this once you're using the custom pixel. How did you go setting everything up? I'd love to know, let me know in the comments. And please take a moment to subscribe to this channel for all of the latest updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.